In this video, I will show my process of making a dry point etching. The size will be 5 by 7 inches and will be of Ronald Reagan. The first step is to do a pencil sketch on tracing paper. In rendering the sketch, I imagine each mark as being a mark on the printing plate. This will help a lot when I start doing the scratching on the plastic plate. You will see later when the scratching begins that the sketch will help a lot with scribing the plate correctly. After the sketch is completed, I tape it to a plain sheet of white paper to make the sketch easier to see. The rectangle around the portrait will be the boundary for the image. No scratching will go outside of the rectangle. Now the protective film is removed from the front and back of the plate and the plate is placed over the sketch. The film protects the plate from getting any unwanted scratches but has to be removed before starting the dry point. I use .03, transparent plastic printmaking plates. The plate is then lined up over the sketch and taped in place. Besides holding the plate in position throughout the scribing process, the tape also helps me from scratching outside of the image area. With my technique of portrait making in dry point, I like to make scratches with sandpaper in the spaces surrounding the face to keep those areas loosely defined and less precise. I want the most definition to be in the eyes, nose, and mouth, so sandpaper is not used there. Those features are drawn with the dry point scribe only. Here, I am using airbrush frisket to mask off the areas where I want to make lines with sandpaper. I use a razor blade to cut the frisket around the shapes that I want to expose to scuffing. This is similar to the way one uses Photoshop to make a selection and mask. The line that is cut around shapes is like a Photoshop selection, and the piece of frisket that is left after peeling away the shape that needs to be exposed, is like a Photoshop mask. It is typical that not all the shapes that will get scuffed up can be exposed with one mask. For this image, the suit and tie were exposed and then sanded. Later, the process of frisking and sanding will be done to the background. I used a sandpaper grid of 80 for this, which is very coarse, but other grids can be used for different effects. Here, I am roughing up the background. The head is not masked off, which allows the scratches to blend into the head. By doing this, the sandpaper effect isn't constrained to specific areas, but blends with the look of the whole drawing. Sliding a piece of black paper under the plastic plate helps with seeing the lines. The sandpaper technique is only for texture. For more precise shading, tone, and details, a scribing tool or etching needle is used. A half cross hatch tool comes in handy when clean, evenly spaced lines are needed. piece of black paper is slid under the plate to help visualize the lines that are being made. Seeing these scratched lines is the tricky part of scribing the plastic plate. There is no way to get a perfect view of all the lines at one time. Whether or not you see the lines depends on the angle of the line and the direction of the light. You have to move the light or plate around at different angles and make a mental note of the lines as you observe them come in and out of view. Then you do your best to form a mental picture of what the print will look like. To make it even trickier, the white scratch marks on a black background that you see here will print as an inverse of what you are looking at. In other words, you are seeing a negative of what the printed piece will be. Now for the printing. Using something like a small piece of matte board, coat the printable area with black etching ink. Use firm pressure to make sure all the inscribed lines are filled with ink. Then use another, clean, piece of the mat board to scrape off the excess ink. Don't get carried away. You don't want to accidentally pull the ink out of the scribed lines. Next, ball up a piece of tarleton and begin to gently wipe off more ink. This wiping off process can take several minutes. Again, be careful not to pull ink out of the inscribed lines. Using a circular motion can help remove the ink from the top of the plate without pulling out the ink in the lines. This is a learned skill. There is a certain feel and finesse that develops with practice, and I'm still learning. The side of your hand can also be used for the final wiping. The proper inking and printing of a dry point print is critical to getting a good print. Finally. 
Cut your printing paper to the size you want and make a template to help you line up the paper with the plate. Put the plate in place on the template, ink side up, and then put a piece of dampened etching paper on top of the plate. Use the template to carefully line it up. Now, lay the protective felt over the plate and run it through the etching press with the proper pressure. Carefully peel the print from the plate, and closely examine the finished print. This video only gives an overview of the dry point scribing and printing process. It doesn't show you all the nuances of dry point printmaking, but maybe it will inspire you to dig deeper into printmaking. This piece was printed in the printmaking studio at Merrimack Community College.